Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to manage and look after really damaged ends. I have found myself in the unfortunate position of having my hair being overprocessed in the recent weeks and as much as that absolutely breaks my heart to say I'm going to be completely transparent and share this as a way of showing you how to rebuild damaged hair. I am all about healthy hair. I am the advocate ambassador for healthy hair. So as hard as it was to actually do this video, I feel like I should because it's being completely open and honest about how to manage hair and bring it back to its full health. And I have absolute faith that I can. Um, I've done it many times before, not on myself, but on others. And now it's my turn to put this into practice for me. So what we'll be doing is creating some movement and some wave to just and, and then how doing something like this can have you also feel a lot more confident while you're managing that hair that you're not quite ready to part with yet. So stay with me and I'll take you through some techniques that will be quite helpful. So this is how I would explain it to any guest in my salon or if I'm doing an online consultation the same way, but I'm going to be able to show you. So using my poor damaged hair as the example here, what I'm just going to do is point out when somebody says to me, where should I cut my hair to make it healthy? This is what I do. When you comb that all down, you can see the thickness, the density, and then it just basically opens up and fans out to not a lot of hair through the ends. So when someone says, how much do I have to cut off to make my hair healthy again? You basically go as far as you can before the hair starts to get thin and wispy and fans out where the density ends and that's where it would be. So if I were to, with my hair, make this look thicker and healthy again, I'd be chopping it about there. Now, when you compare it to where the rest of my hair is sitting on my collarbone, that's coming just to the bottom of my lip. That's a lot of hair. That's a lot of length to lose. So what are our options? What can we do? Well, those ends are looking a little sad and sorry, but they are still there right now. And this is what I've got to work with. So I look at it and think, right, well, treatments are going to be great. Olaplex at this stage is still one of the best on the market for rebuilding the bonds and strength in the hair. The other thing I need to start doing is I talk about lowering heat, we need to lower the heat even more because there's not much this hair is gonna be able to take before further damage can occur. The next thing, and this one is pretty simple, but it's really effective, is get yourself a satin pillowcase, okay? A satin, they're wonderful for your hair and skin. Satin, because it won't draw away moisture from your hair or skin. The other thing I tend to recommend is a satin hair scrunchie for sectioning, tying it up at night when you just don't want your hair to be moving too much anyway while you're sleeping on your satin pillowcase. This has been a godsend, honestly. When I realized I had as much damage as I did, um, I haven't used anything since. Se sectioning is handy as well. So when we are gonna style our hair, rather than clipping that and risking any more damage and pulling, I would just simply get my hair satin scrunchy and just tight. The best thing about a scrunchie, because they're kind of big and fat, they hold the hair so far away. So it's not, it, you, you easily got access to where you're going to style and that's popped out the way. This is not tugging, it's not pulling, there's no compression. I haven't snapped any hairs putting it up and then when I want to take it out, I just simply slide it away. So I'm actually using my satin scrunchie for sectioning as well. So when it comes to the styling, what's best? Well, I'm going to be honest, straightening, is definitely not going to be any help to you whatsoever. When you straighten hair that is damaged, significantly damaged, um, basically what you're doing is opening up and exposing exactly that. So what we want to do is we want to hide and disguise. What we're going to do is actually disguise the thinness and also the breakage that we've got. So I'm going to show you the technique. Now I will be using a brush. I don't want to use straighteners at all. If you have straighteners and you find that's easier to create a shape, a wave, a curl, what have you, yeah. you need a straightener that you can control the temperature of and honestly keep it at 140. Not higher, you could go lower if, you, if your hair responds, uh, but 140 is where I'd be working with. Okay. When you 
gather more hair and turn those thinner hairs into it, then you actually give the illusion of more thick hair to a much smaller amount at the ends. So the brush we're gonna be using is a wooden brush. Wood, because we don't want the heat to keep building up in the brush. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing is using the plastic parts of this round brush that just pop through from the ball bristle. I'm gonna use that to grip. So basically what I'm gonna do is get in there, I'm gonna hold my brush, not this way, but exactly straight down. And I'm gonna, from behind, not in front of my face, from behind, gather the hair. And I actually, did you see me do that? I just kind of rolled the brush as I did that. I kind of smoothed it downward and then rolled it back to get that grip through the roots. This technique is super effective. Damaged hair or not, this is great. And before my hair was damaged, I was still blow drying my hair for its wave with this technique. So I've gathered the hair, it's really nice and taut through there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my hair dryer and I'm gonna heat up through here. It's just a bit of heat. So that's quickly going to allow the bonds to reshape around the brush. And then what I'm gonna do is slide it out a little bit and bring the brush all the way around. And because it's gripping so well, all the way around so that I can apply more heat again from this direction. So the hair dryer, so I'm just gonna hold the hair dryer from the front of me and blow the air back onto the brush with the hair that's being wrapped all the way around. So then that way the, the air will also kind of push the hairs back into the brush. So I've done one full turn. Then I'm gonna slide the brush down again, just like that. Bring it all the way around. I don't wanna add any air at this point so I'll just blow the hair out of the brush. Bring it all the way around. Don't worry about these ends. And we're gonna apply more heat here. So the whole time we're actually creating this coiled hair at the top. Slide again, turn it all the way around, apply the heat here and the air and the hairdryer. So it's very easy, everything's just in front of me, I'm not up here, I'm not backwards, I'm not chasing those hairs, I'm just applying heat from this point. Just there on the brush. Slide again, turn all the way around, I'll apply more air to this area and eventually those last little bits of hair will grip into the brush I'll turn it all keep repeating the same thing all the way around again and you go you keep doing that until you get to the end of your hair so wherever your length finishes that's where you'll finish and then we'll just completely remove the brush now I haven't added clearly any heat at this point but you can see what I've just twisted and it will pretty much finish a bit like that anyway and when we do we just leave it just leave it to cool down at that point <laughs> like that you've done it right it doesn't look like the curl you would get after using the straightening iron it's pretty tight and twisted and that's exactly what I want and it's still quite warm so I'm just gonna let that cool while I moved on to the next section now don't worry if there's some bits that didn't quite get in there or we can use that on the other side anyway it's no big deal so that's just coming not perfectly measured just whatever's falling in that direction now if you want to, you can start by actually putting, using two hands and just helping grip in the roots there. Our second little twist. Still looking a bit dreadlocky. It's okay. Now we're at the wider section. So once we get to the top of the ear, this is where our, our difference between the top of the head and then it goes obviously down behind the section can go all the way down behind the ear. This gets quite long and that's a lot of hair trying to get into a brush and you won't be able to do it. So at this point is where you can section that. Now another little tip for this technique, I rarely do underneath. It takes a while to do. Now if I was going out somewhere special, then yes, I'm gonna do every section of my hair. But for day-to-day -day styling, the top layer is more than enough, more than enough. 
So I'm not going to worry about underneath and I'm just going to continue a similar kind of depth between here and where we got to at the front of the ear and I'm just going to leave underneath, okay? So you can section it off first or you can just go straight in there and you can tip your head over and gather it but we're just going to keep going with that same technique. So brush, I'm doing my left side of my head, I'm using my left hand with the brush, right hand with the hair dryer and here we go. Okay, so some of the hair fell out, fell out there. Don't stress. What I would do there is just get more grip at the roots. So just repeat the roots again. Once the bonds start to take the shape of the brush, you won't have any problem gripping that. So it just means you need to go again at the roots and then you'll find it will follow through the following time. Or maybe the time after that. It doesn't matter. As many times as it takes. <laughs> Another twist is done, let it cool. Don't rush the process. We're gonna do three sections on this side and then I'll show you how this looks when we, we run our th fingers through it. So again, we're gonna gather and twist. I have changed hands. So I have now on my right side, brush in right hand, hair dry on the left. This is probably the only technique I'll ever show or teach in my tutorials where I change hands with my brush. With this, we do change hands. And it is easy. The hairdryer will always just stay right in front of you. There's, there's nothing, like I said, you don't have to chase the hair at all. It just stays right in front of you. And the hand you're using with the brush will also repeat the same technique. Okay, we're gonna let that one just cool and go in for our next. These sections aren't perfect, but this is the beauty of the hairdryer and the brush is it doesn't have to be. It's very forgiving and it's gonna look amazing you watch when we're finished. Now you might be saying, well, how do you do the back? The back is no different. If this is the middle of our head here, I would just keep working exactly the same way as I start at the front as I go as far back as I can. I still, the same thing, I still grab it from the roots, heat up at the roots there with the hairdryer, grab and twist, and everything still stays in front. Yet you'll find that the last section you can get on this side will be the other, the last part of the back, and you're spinning it all the same way. So once we've finished all those little coils and they've cooled down, I have here a texturizing spray just for a little bit of fattening up. Basically, when you've got damaged ends that are looking very thin, fattening up can be great. There is another thing that you can use is a powder. So there's all kinds of varieties of these and that can also help fatten it up a bit. However, I find that the aerosol one I have here is just a little lighter and it will give me something to work with the next day and hopefully the day after that as well. So I'm just gonna spray pick up each little coil I know it's going to shake this out I love this kind of look now doing what we did is not we're not getting a perfect curl we're just we're just moving it and bending it into to give that fatter and disguise those damaged ends. It actually shows me how bad my hair is because this is the least amount of wave I've ever got from that technique I've just showed you. But you can see it's looking a lot fuller. I look forward to showing you how I go with my journey of rebuilding my hair and, and what kind of groovy styles we can create from it. Till next time, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.